Yeah, oh. Yeah, yeah, it's, oh, it's, it's okay. yeah, okay. Okay, it's working. That's great. Yep. You can start. Okay. Great. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so um, welcome to the first tutorial for this term uh, of our UCLA society. And I'm Nick. Um, this is a, a hands on project about doing the hand gesture recognition. Um, okay, so first of all, uh, please uh, give some minutes to briefly introduce you about this project. I know some of you maybe have watched the uh, 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 the video that we post on, on, on uh, our website and the Facebook and something like this. Uh, but for most of them, uh, for most of you who did not know or have idea what we will do for this project, I would like to uh, share more detail about this and. Uh, um, hope you join it. Okay, so some, some backgrounds, of course, this is a kind of recap. Uh, uh, in fact, why we do this is because the majority of deaf and mute people, maybe they use sign language to communicate amongst each other. And sometimes of all course communicate, uh, communicate with us. Um, but however, it has become a barrier for the mute and deaf people that want to intend uh, in, uh, want to integrate into our society because I believe most of us don't know how to read uh, 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 and how to understand the sign languages um, that they perform. So the, the initial idea is to have a medium that can recognize and translate the gesture into understandable words. Uh, for example, it, it can be the text or it can be some voice uh, of speech that that we can we can know what the, uh, what the sign language means. So uh, we want to develop this kind of sign language recognition system. Uh, and in fact, uh, uh, there are two types of uh, sign language recognition system. Uh, one is vision based, another one is sensor based. So we, we apply the vision based methods for in, in this case, uh, because in fact, uh, if we use sensor based, you have to do a lot of preset and it's not actually from my perspective, it has some drawbacks. For example, if you use sensor based system, uh, you cannot uh, just uh, use it anywhere because you have to preset, you may have a, a very a set of equipment that you have to bring uh, it's together to or maybe it's very you know heavy to take. It, it, uh, you cannot use it in a, in a wide field. So a vision based to that uh, method may be more practical because uh, everybody has cameras on your phone and uh, 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 on your computer. So it's it's very practical and more easy to to set. So we apply a vision based method here. Uh, and the, the goal of this of this project uh, or, or of the tutorial as well for you is uh, to do some further work based on uh, the given baseline. So we have provided in the repo uh, on GitHub with a baseline framework and a data set. Uh, although this is not a very big data set because uh, uh, I don't want to to uh, waste a lot of time on training and uh, 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 and the data processing stage. Uh, we only provide a sub data set of the regional project that I have done before. Uh, but yeah, that's also in love for you to, to train your own model to have a promising uh, performance. But you, what you can do uh, based on that is to, you can modify the parameters uh, of the techniques that we have applied in the in the baseline model or in the baseline system. Uh, for example, for example, um, the, uh, the region of interest uh, segmentation techniques uh, apply threshold uh, to, to tune which colors that we want in the image. So you can modify this kind of parameters. And of course, for machine learning models, you can also apply the hyperparameters that you want to see if you can improve um, the, the performance. And you, of course, can also propose your own implementation to replace original technique because this is just a baseline model and this kind of uh, uh, a personable way to, to realize this, this system. But you can, of course, design your own implementation, for example, the ROI segmentation techniques and uh, use some other uh, machine learning models in, 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 in the stage. 
And of course, finally, uh, you are also encouraged to assemble the elements you have developed or you have designed into a real-time uh, condition system. And you can also play with it to say if it can um, accurately translate to what you have performed to the camera, okay? So the data set, a uh, brief introduction to what have we have provided this time. We have uh, 66, uh, uh, 660 labeled frame sets, uh, which belongs to uh, 12 classes. That's, uh, um, this is a, this is a uh, like, like the diagram shows here. We have uh, 12 classes of them uh, out of 26, right? And we have included two dynamic one, uh, which is, uh, I'm sorry, this is, uh, later J and this later Z. Uh, these two are dynamic gesture. And the other, one, the other 10 of them are A, B, C, D. I don't know, I don't know exactly class system, but they are static. Okay, so yeah, just like we show here. Uh, and actually each frame set contains 10 continuous frames because we want to recognize dynamic gestures. They are not a single image, right? They should be a continuous frame. So. Uh, both for static and, and dynamic gestures, we all, uh, we all provide uh, continuous frames uh, to form a structural data uh, frame. So this is this is kind of uh, data uh, frame set, not not only single image. So uh, we have also uh, split into training and test sets uh, uh, under the under the. Um, a repo on the data set uh, file folder. So you can directly use a training set to split further as the validation set and the training set. Uh, you can only use your test set uh, for, for, for testing, not for um, validation and training. Okay. So this is what we have explained in our previous tutorial why we should do this. Okay, so there are some examples. For, uh, in the data set, uh, the 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 A the sub sub figure A is the uh, some of the some of the gestures that, that uh, uh, here, and this B and C are two dynamic gestures. This is one sample, but this comes from uh, uh, this is one one frame set one whole frame set for B and C, but for A there comes from different frame set for 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 demonstration. Okay. So there are some simple properties. Uh, all data set are from three males and two females, and the age is from 20 to 80s. Okay, so with you can see uh, complex backgrounds. We did not uh, 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 collect the data set from a, a very clean, a clean data background because that is how how uh, uh, it works in the real world. You cannot specify a real a real clean backgrounds to perform your, your, your system. So we, we do something like this. And also the uh, illumination condition is a little bit different. You can see uh, uh, some of them are, are very light and some of them a little bit dark like this. Okay, so we want to build a robust uh, system to, 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 to do the translation. Okay, so uh, taking into more detail about uh, the principles or, or the design of the system that we have pro provided in the baseline, uh, I will I will try to explain you step by step uh, 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 by our, how 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 train the system and how we test it. Okay, so uh, be a quick. Uh, so with the input, uh, so because in the training set uh, in the training phase. We know which frame set is uh, a dynamic and which is static, right? So we use a dynamic gesture, firstly as input, and we extract the ROI, the region of interest uh, uh, um, uh, segmentation techniques here to segment the, this region. And then we will do some normal things in, in machine learning the, in the processing stage for rescale normalization. And we use this kind of data to train our dynamic gesture classifier. Uh, in this term, in this case, we apply uh, hidden Markov models to to classify the uh, later J and later Z, which is dynamic gesture. And uh, for the static gesture, we uh, uh, after after doing the same ROI segmentation, we will uh, localize uh, the gestures uh, uh, the, the gestures region uh, instead of the whole in, instead of the whole. Uh, uh, frame set because actually the location 
uh, information is important. Uh, it is not is not important because uh, what the gesture performs is not related to where the hand uh, 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 shows in the image. It can be the upper corner. It can be the right corner. It doesn't matter. The only matter, the only thing that does matter is uh, what's the shapes of the hand. So we do the localization. Okay. So and 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 then we will extract the bounding feature. What well, the bounding feature means is just uh, uh, we just uh, make approximation here. We uh, extract a, a, a simple bounding features, which is represented by uh, the aspect ratio of the hand region here. For example, the the height divided by the weight. Well, the weight. So this is just a, a simple approximation by bounding feature. You, you can, of course, uh, apply your own technique, for example, using a Fourier descriptor to, to describe the, the bounding features in a more precise way. OK. And then we use the PCA uh, to, to, to reduce the dimension, because uh, each frame we have, uh, though, although we have applied rescaling here to get a 32 times 32 image here, it can be a very high dimensional data that uh, which very, uh, it's very hard to be uh, to, to be used by KNN models. So we use PCA to to reduce the dimension to uh, avoid maybe overfitting or something like this. Okay, so finally we should use the they uh, use both the uh, uh, frame set of dynamic and static gestures with labeled. Uh, 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 data set to train our pre-classifier. So the pre-classifier uh, pre is set for here. Uh, later on, you will say it's, it's used for uh, pre-classifier, which uh, 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 to classify if the input data set, uh, uh, input the frame set is uh, dynamic or the static. And then we will, uh, after the pre-classifier has determined which frame set it is, uh, which kind of, uh, dynamic or static gesture it is, then we can use the corresponding uh, the classifiers to, to do further classification. Uh, we will say in the testing set, uh, t testing phase, you will get more uh, 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 clear about the point. Because here, uh, just like show, we will use the pre-classifier, which is implemented by LSTM model to pre-classifier if this frame set, we don't know if this is a dynamic or static, right? Because we, ha uh, uh, so we have to classify, uh, uh, pre -classify use a classifier, pre-classifier to classify, uh, determine if it's dynamic or static one. Okay. And then following the exactly the same pre percent steps, we will apply for dynamic, uh, for dynamic uh, uh, gestures, we will apply dynamic gesture classifier. For the static gesture, we will apply static classifier that we have trained before and we get uh, the output. So by this uh, model, we actually apply three classifier here in total to implement the system. Okay. But actually one trick here that we have used is that because you know we have 10 frames, continuous frames here, if we perform the static gestures, uh, we actually have 10 images to, 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 to do the classification. So we have a voting based uh, uh, method to see which is the majority votes uh, uh, among the 10 continuous frames. Then we will determine the output based on the, the voting, not, a, not, not a single or, or, or uh, any of the, the frame set. So, yeah, so actually for the ROI segmentation, that you, you, you might be a little bit uh, confused how, how we perform there, how we locate, uh, why we apply this stage here. So this is for extract the wanted region. Uh, the region of interest means that uh, we want to extract the region that uh, uh, does matters, right? So we apply this technique, this block by two stages. First stage, we do segmentation. We simply threshold a, uh, a, a certain color uh, regions from certain uh, uh, color space. For example, in this case, we use SHV color space to implement this technique. Uh, you can also apply it into other color space. That, that is what I mean in the previous uh, uh, statement. You can just to modify this kind of parameter. You can apply it into another color, 
color space to try if it can perform better. So in this case, we in the first step, we segment the wanted color region that is actually the skin color detection. And in the second step, we design uh, ROI cropping algorithm to, uh, to eliminate the uh, noise points. As you can see, we finally get this kind of uh, image that is uh, a kind of feature instruction uh, from the original image. Okay, so how, how does it work? For example, uh, like just like I show, uh, I said before, uh, 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 for example, we set certain um, a threshold for the three dimension. Uh, if we want to the uh, yellow yellow uh, uh, region in this image, we can set the threshold, for example, for the first dimension from 28 to 30 and the second uh, certain range and, and the, as well as the third one. So we can, we can stretch hope. We can we can we can we can filter the certain area that we want. That is the same for 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 the hand to perform her. But you can see there are some limitations. For example, in this case, we can see the similar re, uh, similar colors region will also be extracted, also detected as the skin region. So we further apply the image cropping algorithms to eliminate the noise. That is the second stage here. Okay, so um, but this technique is a little bit uh, hard to difficult to explain in detail, and I believe our focus is on uh, how to implementing the machine learning or the AI techniques to deal with it. And uh, this is a kind of image processing technique, so it's not very important to show the details. But uh, a brief introduction is that the image cropping uh, algorithm based on two criteria. The first one is that the sparse distribution of noise on the edge. As you can see, most of the uh, noise are sparse. Uh, of course, this is a, 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 a not a case, but most of the cases uh, they are they are very sparse, not not concentrated as 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 the hand, uh, and they are also tend to appear around the hand, but not, uh, not, not in very center area. Uh, and the second uh, criteria is, is the centrality distribution of hand. That's also uh, the, the performer or, of the, or the signer uh, 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 tends to perform their gesture at the central, around the central of the, of the image, not uh, as a uh, um, rarely uh, perform the gesture on the edge or on the corner. So that is not uh, uh, for what I will usually do. Uh, more details will, will, be, will, be, will be demonstrated uh, in our notebook and you can see how does it work after uh, uh, by applying this cropping logarithm. Of course, you can check the details of the logarithm uh, uh, in, in, in the, in the uh, uh, Python file uh, that we have provided. You can, you can try to see how it works if you are interested in. Okay, so then we will have more detail. Uh, we will move to our Jupyter notebook to see uh, how it really work uh, after this brief introduction. So let's show my screen for, for, for this. Okay, so if you have uh, uh, goes to our um, uh, repo, uh, you can see you, you can just download the codes and uh, to see uh, there is a oh, sorry no 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 this one uh, it should be this one yeah you can see the the, uh, the data set is uh, are stored in this in this folder um, there are training and test set just like mentioned before for example we can check the static. There are 10 gestures. Um, okay, so image are all here, right? And you can use this data set to train your model. But you, of course, if you are interested, you can also collect or build your own data set instead of using this one. Uh, and there are a readme file, you can, you can go through it, but uh, I think I have covered all the things uh, in, in the previous introduction. Uh, now, uh, after you download this, uh, you can open it uh, in your Jupyter notebook. Uh, for example, uh, yeah, we, we have, I think I have opened one here. Yeah, because 
Yeah. So yeah, this has has been open. We can we can we can we can run it, but I I don't think we have enough time to run all of them. You can make. Uh, I think there is very little things that you have to you have to do by yourself because. Uh, I have right all things. Uh, only thing that you should do if you only want to complete this notebook that is in the testing phase. You have to, uh, you have to, of course, uh, uh, load and process the testing data by yourself. That, but actually, this is very similar uh, that we have done in the training phase. So you just copy them and, and change some simple parameters, and you can it can work. Okay, let's try. I try some initial state and to demonstrate how the uh, how the uh, 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 ROI and how the classifier works, how the system is built by by some simple step. Okay, so um, there are some lot of more, uh, packages that you needed. You can you can just simply run just like I I, I said in in the readme file. You can. You, you can apply not this one, so just like you can uh, directly run this uh, file to to install the required package. But uh, I'm not sure uh, because some 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 of my colleagues tell me that they they uh, made error uh, if they don't if they only run this to to store uh, to install the required package. In this case, you can you can use PIP uh, command to to install the package or the model that you 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 don't have. Uh, uh, some of uh, 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 reporters say they need to further um, download the TensorFlow, Keras, and HM Learns package uh, instead of uh, 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 besides of this uh, this package that I have right in this txt file. Okay, so let's back to here. Uh, this is a, a monitor uh, a function that we will apply to monitor our uh, uh, the process. Uh, you will see later. So just run it. Um, okay. This is a demonstration function, uh, which is not important. We just want to show how how the process works. So you can check it later on. Uh, let's let's demo some examples here for for reference. Okay, let's run. So it says for every 100 image, we will demonstrate uh, the original image and the uh, cropping image and the segmentation image. Let's wait some time to see. Yeah, let's see. For example, here, this is the original one. And this is what we apply for the first stage of the skin color detection. Uh, you can see there is some uh, noise out of uh, the hand region. Okay, so it, it will update it. And then you apply what we call cropping uh, here to crop the image. But sometimes if we only apply only once the crop, it can cannot get the best results. For example, in this case, you can see they are a little different. We further crop that. Uh, into into uh, a more precise way, uh, and just like I said, for the dynamic uh, for static gesture, the the uh, for dynamic gesture the, the the location is important because just like you say, the letter Z is like this, right? It's like this. You you are moving your hand, and so the location information is important. But for but for static one, the location is not important. Uh, so we directly use this kind of crop image and resize it uh, to, to, to something for, for training. And uh, this is a rescaled image here. Okay, so um, it will consume maybe more than uh, uh, five minutes to run the, the, the processing and loading uh, uh, process. So we uh, may not wait for that. We can directly say, uh, uh, see some, some results that we have, we have done before. So for the step three, uh, now we have we have loaded all the the, the the image and the label, but actually we will train just like I mentioned before three classifiers in this case. So we have to uh, reform the data set, the, the the process data set, 
into uh, actually uh, uh, into three sub, uh, separated data set for uh, the pre-classifier, static classifier, and dynamic gesture classifier, respectively. Uh, there are some uh, 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 transformations here. For example, we flatten the image and we extract the bounding features for for dynamic gesture. And this is a label uh, 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 to say uh, to for, for the pre-classifier to say if the if the uh, uh, frames are dynamic or static. Okay, so and this gesture is is a label for exact uh, uh, class of the gesture. It's letter A, letter B, or letter Z. So something like this is also a label. Okay, so there are some uh, descriptions of, of the data set. Uh, this is to reform our data set into three separate ones uh, for the pre classification data set and the label for pre classification, and uh, this is for static dynamic. Okay. So the emphasis of this notebook that you may want to learn more about machine learning, you can read this, this introduction for, for example, LSTM that we have applied this as a pre-classifier. So for a brief uh, 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 information, you can see a typical uh, LSTM block has three separate gate or three parts. Uh, the, for the forget gate, it determines how much information that we need to forget from the from the uh, last state. Okay. Uh, so the H uh, uh, refers to the the state of the of the LSTM block, and T minus one means the state of the last uh, time points uh, from 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 the previous time uh, time points. And the same is the information that we uh, 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 have. And uh, this is T minus one means the last time points, the information was kept in the uh, uh, LSTM block. So the forget gate uh, will determine how much information that we should uh, uh, be, keep, uh, be, be forget. So, so uh, we forgot, right? So this is the information and this uh, neural network layer determines the FT, which is a proportion, uh, and we apply a, a product here to determine the proportion to be forgot here. And the first, the second gate is the input gate, which determines how much information should be added from the new input to the current state and the information here. So uh, it takes a very similar strategy. We use new network. Uh, layers here to determine uh, to determine uh, how much information should be should be added here by the product, and for the output gate, it's a similar uh, strategy. We use, of course, another new network layer here to see how much information should be output uh, as the state of the uh, new net LSTM block cell. And, uh, and the other things will continue doing this recursively. So some mathematic details will be shown here. You can read it later if you are interested in. So this actually is a principle of LSTM work. Okay. Uh, okay. So oh, this is a typo, I think. Uh, this should be like I will update it later, but let's. And it, okay, so it, no, this is as well. This is, should be B with the, the footnote O, but right, that doesn't matter. Uh, for the LSTM, you can you can you can of course tune this per hyperparameters, uh, but don't don't tune this too. This because we 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 have a preset. There are ten continuous frame set uh, 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 continuous frames, so the the time steps should be ten. And this is for uh, the rescaling vectors. Uh, we have rescaled the, 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 the for each, sam, uh, each frame into 32 times 32. So after flatten, it should be a, a, a 1024 dimension uh, vector as an input. But of course, you can do some uh, 
uh, dimension reduction uh, 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 techniques here to reduce the, 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 the dimension of the input vector. But you can tune uh, this kind of things. For example, the STM uh, and, uh, uh, sales number and the epoch and, and, and the bench size, of course. Uh, so this is a train. This is a training phrase here. We we we, uh, we simply uh, do uh, a training here without uh, cross validation. You can apply your own method to do uh, cross validation to say if your model uh, is robust enough uh, to to apply on the test as that. Okay. So you can say the pre-classification got a very good performance here in the training set. Uh, okay, so uh, so this is a validation, right? On the, we, we validate it on the validation set, and it's also pre, uh, it, uh, performs good in the pre-classification uh, pre to say if the frame set is dynamic or static. And for the static, Static gesture classifier, we apply a very simple logarithm, machine learning models here as a KNM, uh, because you know uh, uh, you can of course try many other models uh, like SVM, like random forest, uh, and other things here. But we only apply a very simple one uh, for demonstration and for baseline. Of course, uh, leave some space for improvements. I have to say. I have to say. And the only parameters that you can tune in KNN is the number of K, right? number of neighbors. Uh, but yeah, you can of course try it and also turn, uh, try to use other models in this step. Uh, notice that we have applied PCA models here, but you actually can consider, um, just like I mentioned uh, in these slides, let's, let's open it again, in the, in the system frameworks page, uh, you can consider if it's uh, reasonable that we compact or con concated, concatenate the, the bounding features before doing PCA, or should we uh, 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 compact this, this feature after doing PCA with the uh, image vector? Yeah, which way is more reasonable for, for using. So you, you should consider about that. Okay, so let's come back to here. Let's make it bigger. Okay, so let's say uh, the static gesture classifier also performs very good uh, in the validation set here. Okay, so further uh, going to the HMM, which is a high hidden mark of model uh, is actually also a very uh, old uh, time series analysis model. Uh, I think before the RNN and before LSTM, but actually RNN should kind of, uh, RNN and uh, uh, LSTM and HMM are also follows the mark of decision process uh, uh, or follows the mark of chain, right? So they have this very similar, uh, actually uh, 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 not similar, it's just a, this is a more strict assumption for HMM. Uh, it have to follow a, a homogeneous Markov chain assumption as well as an observation independent assumption. It's said that the hidden state at any time points only depends on the hidden states at, a, at the last time points. And for the second assumption, it says observation state only depends on the hidden state at these port hand points, not depends on the previous states here. So this is uh, the basic uh, assumption. And uh, in fact, HMMs can deal with three kinds of problems. But in this case, uh, 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 for the training phase, the HMM slows the estimation problems. That is given uh, observation states that is actually the, the 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 frame sets that we have input to the system the model which is represented by the transition matrix the prob probability matrix as well as the initial parameters matrix here the model should be estimated to maximize the conditional probability that the uh, uh, the observation series appealing is a model with given 
the parameters which is that we want to optimize. And to solve this estimation problem, we use some uh, bomb wager logarithms as well as some other uh, advanced, but this is, not, this is not very important if you don't want to go very deep in the Markov or, or in the HM models. So, but in the testing phase, uh, we, uh, this is not pre-classification, this should be dynamic. Uh, this is a typo, so sorry for that. Uh, uh, for this uh, testing phase, the HMM actually slows the evaluation problem. So this is what we have the model because we have estimated the best model during the training phase, and we won. And we also have the observation uh, series here, and we will calculate the given model, uh, the probability that. Uh, this observation appears uh, in, in the model. So uh, that means we can compare, uh, uh, for example, in this case, we will train two HMM, two Heidemark of models, uh, one for latest J, one for latest Z, because there are two dynamic gestures in the uh, American sign language alphabet. Um, okay, so we will train two. And uh, uh, if uh, and, and for the for the model J, we train it with only the samples uh, or the observation series of later J's uh, frame sets. And for Z, we do the same. We only use the data from the gesture Z to train it. And in the evaluation problem, that is a testing phase here, uh, we input the uh, unknown observation, uh, 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 unknown class of uh, observation series into the both of the two model. Uh, if that actually the, the ground true uh, label for this is, is, is later J, then the J's HM model will output a bigger uh, probability this than the Z's model. So we will compare which one, uh, which probability is, is, is larger, then we will re recognize this observation series belongs to uh, actually, which model, uh, which label, or which class it is. So we actually train two models here, and you can see here uh, we do some, we, we split the training set into later J and later Z according to its label. Okay, so you can apply this, you, you can visualize this vector, and you will have a deeper insight how does it work. But uh, in a high level explanation, uh, we split the, the training set of the dynamic gesture into later J and later Z. And we only use the, uh, we only use the, the, the later J's data to fit the HM model J. And we only use later Z's data to fit HM model Z. And in the testing fit, in the testing phase, we 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 input both uh, we input the the observation series, which is the frame sets, into both into both the models. Like you can see here, we input both models with the same input uh, frames, and we will say we use argmax argmax function here to say which one has the bigger. Uh, probability, then we will say uh, uh, the, 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 the class or the model with the biggest uh, probability should be the true class of the input frames. Okay, now we, uh, I hope I explain clearly about how the HM, HMM works in practical. So we can say this is works very good because this is only a two class. This is a binary classification problem. So HMM models works very good in this time. Okay, finally, we can assemble uh, uh, all the elements that we have trained before uh, to form our uh, recognition system, like showing this figure. Okay, so. Uh, uh, we just clean the memory to catch the testing data. Uh, we don't want to consume a lot of data uh, uh, by simultaneously loading the training and testing data. So we, we, we clean the, the list that we have loaded data before 
And uh, this is to do part, but I show here uh, that's not matter. You can try yourself uh, to say if you have fully understand how the pre-processing pipeline works. And uh, yeah, so after you load the testing data, you uh, you do exactly the same things uh, like we have done. Uh, you can you can follow this 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 pipeline this follow chart. Uh, to, 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 to do this. Uh, so in the, in, the, in the testing set, we will do, what we have to do here is that we, all, uh, we firstly, just like I show, we firstly use a pre-classifier uh, uh, to predict uh, if, if the uh, input frames are dynamical gesture. So if it's a static, zero represents for static, uh, in this case, you can you can you can check that uh, you can of course do uh, do modification by yourself. You can of course do one as the aesthetic. Uh, that's also feasible to do. Okay, so if that is a static gesture, we will apply further. Uh, 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 firstly, we have to separate the frame set into single uh, 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 frames. Uh, 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 because there are 10 continuous in each frame set. We, we separate into, into a single frames and then we put them one by one into the, into the uh, let's say, into a KNN model uh, to say uh, that is a vote vector records the classification results for these frame sets. That means there are 10, there are 10 predicted label here, uh, because uh, but they are all below in one frame set. They should they should be a same gesture actually, and then we will we will say which one is the which one is the uh, 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 majority in this vector in this vote vector, and we will put that class as a prediction, uh, final prediction for this frame set. And uh, we will do the same if it's uh, pre-classified as a dynamic gesture. We will use HM models to say which model it is. And uh, just note that we plus ten here because in the loading phrase we say uh, we uh, have label for the uh, for the letter J as uh, label ten, and for this is is eleven. But we only have two class here, so it will return. Uh, it will this will return zero or one because it's a binary uh, classification. So you plus ten as the uh, uh, global class classes level uh, in, uh, uh, containing the static one. So okay. So finally, we got the 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 prediction list of testing set, and we can calculate some accuracy things like this. But you can see here it's a little bit weird. Uh, the same word is that the test accuracy precision reference score is much lower than what we have done in, in, in each separate classifier before. Uh, we almost get uh, completely uh, right in each classifier. Uh, you can say for, for the pre uh, for static classifier, we got 99.8%. For the for the pre classification, we got uh, around around uh, 98, 99 percent as well, and even for the dynamic gesture classification, we got one uh, one hundred percent as the fully co correct classification. But in the test of uh, testing phase, we only get this kind of matrix, which is very lower, uh, much lower than what we uh, expected. So uh, one thing that you have to do is to think about why uh, it performs like this and try to improve them. And of course, you can also uh, then we, we, we this is a test offline, right? We have our test set and we load them and we test them. And then the next phase that you might you might want to do is to uh, to build them in a real time system. Uh, once you have built them, assemble all of them into, into actually a, a real-time system, you can 
uh, apply uh, apply. You can play with it. You can use your camera and you you, you pose your hand just behind it, uh, just a, just a, 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 in the front of it, and you can say uh, if it can perform uh, as you expect it. If you, if it can really translate your gesture. Uh, into understandable words. So if it works, you can apply it into some practical scenarios that you may want to use to control your uh, system or to, uh, to control uh, uh, your air, condition, air conditioner or something like the, anything that you want to apply in the practical. So yeah, so uh, I hope you uh, enjoying this boring code reading part, but that's very important for you to understand this code and then you can apply, uh, uh, that's very fundamental to understand how the system works in actually. Uh, then you can apply them into practical usage. So uh, I hope you have fun with this project and uh, uh, just uh, uh, make your hands on to to do to do the the all the things by yourself You're not just reading uh, oh you seems uh, i i understand this code line by line but i never implemented by yourself that don't work uh, for you to really understand how how the system works you have to you can try to write the code you can try to repeat the work uh, the, the this code by yourself within uh a totally blank uh, a notebook or even in your spider or other IDE instead of notebook. Uh, once you have done that, you, I have to say, you must uh, uh, completely understand how this code works, but not exactly only read them, how you, you do all of this uh, uh, training, processing and testing. Okay, so if you want to check uh, more detail about the pre-processing, which is this tool, <clears throat> you can just simply open the the module, the, uh, the, the package that we have provided. We, we pack it into this, this package, just like pre-processing, uh, because you can see we also apply this package to, to do the segmentation and to do the cropping. Uh, we can open it to have a quick view for that. It's a very long Python file. Uh, this is for the cropping. We input the frames and we do a lot of operations here to return the cropping uh, 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 image. And of course, uh, we, crop, we return some cropping ages, uh, boundary features for, for further further uh, uh, work. Uh, and this is for segmentation. This you can this is much simpler because we can apply the uh, open uh, uh, functions in your open CV to just the thresholding the wanted region uh, in that. So uh, the key point is to understand this part if you are really interested in image, uh, image processing that how we uh, apply our cropping algorithms shown like this, from this stage to, to this stage. Okay, so um, any question about this project uh, or what I've uh, introduced to you? Okay, so yeah, I don't think uh, if there no any question, I think we have uh, <clears throat> released our first uh, um, tutorials completely, and you can download them and try by yourself uh, to to implement that. Uh, thanks, Sink. That was great. Um, I think you can uh, stop the recording now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Of course.